This book is titled Life 3.0, What It's Like to Be Human in the Age of Artificial Intelligence, and it's written by Max Tegmar. That's a great book in its own right. It examines what the future might look like and some of the different scenarios that we might be getting ourselves into. But I was really excited to find out that one of the surveys that he asks in the middle of the book is actually online, and it was filled out by lots of experts. So this is the Future of Life Institute. And I want to go through this because it gives us some insights into how true experts in the field are thinking about the future of AI. But before we dive into what the collective intelligence of experts says, I thought it'd be fun to just fill out the survey ourselves because I have a few thoughts on it and I would love to hear yours in the comments below. These are great questions for getting our brains thinking about the more long-term effects of the world that we're about to step into. By what year do you guess that there's at least a 50% chance that AI can outperform humans at all intellectual tasks? I think there's going to be holdout. Chat GPT is obviously super intelligent when it comes to writing essays or passing the bar exam or medical exam. So it is really superhuman in some ways. And we're looking at object recognition and even in robotics, things like Big Dog is super flexible. But there's some corners of intelligence that it just still seems really far away from. Some of the abstract thinking, the world modeling, the connection to like emotions, and even the zero shot learning isn't quite there yet. So I'm gonna say another four years. So it being mid 2023 right now, I'll put it at 2027. If such superhuman AI appears, will it be a good thing? And it probably will at first, then it will go to probably good and then probably bad and then definitely bad in the long run. So I'm pretty sure as it accelerates and we don't accelerate, there's a problem in that gap. So my gut instinct is sort of to say definitely bad, but I'm actually gonna say highly uncertain because it's got that same thing where like a worm's trying to make a prediction about what a human's gonna do and you're just not on the same plane. And I don't even know what the risks are because they're unknown unknowns. So I tend to wanna put uncertainty. Do you want there to be super intelligent AI? For example, general intelligence far beyond human level. No, I don't think so. I don't think there's any world where this isn't gonna happen, so I 100% want to try to prepare for it. We have to think about it as an existential crisis. This is something humanity needs to deal with. Intelligence has no reason why it can't run on silicon and all sorts of other substrates. It's not something special about the substrate in our head. Something special is in the connections, the learning process, and we're starting to figure that out. And it's starting to be smart enough to fix itself at an even faster rate. No, I don't want it but I will have it. If super intelligence arrives, what would you like to happen to? Human should continue to exist. I'm inclined to check that box. Human should be replaced by our AI descendants. Maybe like in the long run, but not the next generation. Humans should merge with machines into cyborgs. God, that's possible, but for some reason I'm really hesitant to to want that, so I'm not gonna check that box. And I don't like humans should be uploaded either. I, I get a lot of people do, and I wanna read this book called The Age of M that talks all about that sort of thing. But after you see a couple Black Mirror episodes, you're like, once there's a digital copy of my brain, a lot of them are probably just gonna end up in, well, hopefully not tortured, but like maybe bad situations or even just like glitches and the software they're running on is just weird. I don't want them replicated in all these weird spots. There's no way this exact form factor, this human-like body is going to be the same by the time we get to planet after planet after planet and it's gonna have to be this brain in some kind of cyborg body or something. Radiation just tears through DNA. It's not a great material. If super intelligence arrives, who should be in control? You know what, maybe I'm actually inclined to say, well, no, because I want humans in the loop, obviously, but having something intelligent, if it has our best interests, what if it's like, no, don't let humans make mistakes. I don't really want humans driving at a certain point. It should be all machine driving if we want to really be safe. I'm gonna say machines, call me contrary. You gotta be like, uh, yeah, take the human out of the loop. We have to acknowledge just how stupid we are. God, but that could lead to some more Orwellian stuff too. Maybe it depends. I mean, not humans. We probably can't handle the future ourselves. So maybe it depends. If you one day get an AI helper, do you want it to be conscious? No. Definitely not. For example, to have subjective experiences as opposed to being like a zombie, which can at best pretend to be conscious. Oh, I would prefer if my AI was not something that I had to really worry about turning off. I'm really concerned about its well-being in the same way a human, because it needs to think and grow and exercise its brain and accomplish things. And I gotta ask, what kind of passions do you have in the world? I think all of those things might come along with human style consciousness. Preferably, I would like it not to have those kind of qualities built in. They just seem more risky, more unknown, and they might make me feel guilty. I mean, it might depend on the circumstance, but I feel strong enough on the spectrum on this category that I'll say no, I don't need to 
Oh, feel guilty about how I treat it. That's exactly what, I didn't even look at this drop down yet. I mean, not that I'm gonna treat it bad or anything. I'll still really be nice to it, but I just, at the end of the day, really wanna know that it doesn't have this fear system and world model that would be something that I'd have to empathize with. Because if I knew it was there, I absolutely would. And I hope we have tests in the future that can look at this. This is an active area of research too. And I hope if someone else realizes that I'm running that way, that they don't let it so I'm stuck in some really bad situation too. Because me and the people I care about have world models that definitely can go through sort of tragedy and pain and they can live a really bad life if they're not given certain things. What should a future civilization strive for? We could strive for maximizing positive experiences, minimizing suffering, another goal that I sympathize with, whatever they want, even if it's pointless. Unsure. Okay, so I feel pretty confident that what I think it should be doing is minimizing suffering. I don't like the idea of maximizing positive outcomes and they might seem like the flip side of the coin, but I don't see it that way. Minimizing suffering is sort of ability to have sort of freedom, to be neutral if you want, to pursue a passion. Happiness gets weird. We already have too much sugar, too much social media, too much of a good thing already. I'm, I don't think we should be maximizing for that, even if it's in a balanced, structured way. Do you want life to spread into the cosmos? Yeah, there's planets, global warming and stuff. I don't know how long we got. We're humans, we're gonna move from continent to continent and we'll explore the oceans and explore space. And next up is Mars. And then obviously we're gonna move to other solar systems if possible. So yeah, and I see nothing wrong with that. To me, that's, that's part of the kind of passion it is to be human. This part I'm really excited for. So these 12 scenarios will give us a lot of food for thought. We're looking at what life might look like in the but kind of near, long, and far future, and how that changes depending on how AI is developed or isn't developed. Start with the libertarian utopia. I wish these had photos, I should have AI. Oh, well, let's have AI generate some photos for us. All right, we'll start with libertarian utopia. Human cyborgs, uploads, and super intelligence coexist peacefully thanks to property rights. Having the benefit of actually reading the book, there is a little bit more to this, and it actually felt pretty legit. Property rights might be so valuable to humans and we can get them to respect our property rights because there's nothing else of value we could probably offer them. That could be one thing that they might trade, maybe immortality or you and all your descendants will always have food and peace if you'll give us a little chunk of your land because we can use that. And there's also something about the way it worked in the past where land rights has really helped kind of keep just things stable in societies that that might be a route actually. So I'm, I'm gonna go pretty high on that one. Libertarian Utopia is maybe my favorite actually, but there's more to go through. So let me tell you the other 11. Benevolent dictator. So everybody knows that the AI runs society and it enforces strict rules, but most people view this as a good thing. The fact that most people view it as a good thing is a little bit of a tell, but doesn't it seem more likely there's this AI dictator and it's not making everybody really happy? But I guess this is the benevolent dictator idea. Okay, so if it if it is aligned with what we want and it's, it's really Really an ultra enforcer to the entire world so we don't have to worry about like US and China fighting and all these sort of other infighting groups. Sounds pretty good too. So I'm gonna give that one, I guess, a five stars. That's tough. We like the police to enforce the laws. We like the laws and we make the laws because they're best for society. I guess this could be a, a good universe. Okay, so this is an egalitarian utopia where we don't have property rights so human cyborgs and uploads coexist peacefully. We abolish property rights and guaranteed income. So it's all just Kind of communism and utopia, egalitarian, okay? I don't know, man, I just have like such a tainted view of every time this has happened at a big scale. I have heard in political theory, you can sort of think of the closer you are to your family, the more communist you are. When it comes to my resources, I'm gonna share them pretty abundantly with my kids and my oh, wife. Wow. And I'm gonna feel pretty much the same way as I go through extended family, but as they get further and further away, it's kind of like, all right, well, you fend for yourself, like independence, go America. And I would like a world where I, everybody I pass on the street and they think that equally about me and it all just blends together into 7 billion people thinking and caring about one another. But that is so hard because it just hasn't worked before. But maybe with mass communications and artificial intelligence able to oversee the entire world and help kind of connect some of those pieces and make it so that you can't get away with taking from others and not the repercussions, then maybe I'll put this one up higher than I normally would. I give that one four stars. This is the gatekeeper. So it's a super intelligence. It lives on the cloud everywhere in the world, every phone, all that stuff. And it's created with the goal of interfering as little as necessary, but it needs to sometimes to prevent the creation of another super intelligence. So we're basically left to our own devices, but this one AI stops all other eyes from being created. So I'm kind of a fan of the idea of just like stopping right now and maybe not pushing AI into the future. Yep. I could, of course we can't. So if we just get AI and then we have it enforce that and it doesn't go any further because it's for the best benefit in the long term of 
Humanity, I guess I kind of like that one too. The result, helper robots with slightly subhuman intelligence abound and human machine cyborgs exist, but technology progress is forever stymied. Yep, man, I got a feeling I'm not in the popular opinion on this one, but I'm gonna give it a five. Honestly, that's my favorite one. It almost makes me want to take away a star from libertarian and benevolent dictator. Yeah, you know, call, call me a little bit of a Luddite. That's just kind of think that'd be best for us. Or maybe we could progress really slowly. And I assume it's still gonna give us some benefits, you know, cancer, research and self-driving cars and some of the stuff that just keeps us safe and, and happy. Okay, so this is the protector god AI. Super powerful, maximizes human happiness by intervening only in ways that preserve our feeling of control over our own destiny and hides well enough that many humans don't even know that the AI exists. Hmm. Oh, maybe I like that one a little bit more than the gatekeeper. So we get to preserve our feeling of control and our own destiny but it hides well enough that we don't even really see it as super intelligence. It's just probably gonna feel like Siri or Alexa and we don't think, oh my God, there's that thing over there tearing up a city, building some crazy cyber, Cybertron type looking thing. But the problem with maximizing human happiness is just kind of where I lose it from that other question. Not too bad, but I'm not gonna give it my five star. Enslaved God, a super intelligent AI is confined by humans who use it to produce unimaginable technology and wealth that can be used for good or bad depending on human controllers. Heck no, this is zero stars. Can I give it one? Do I have to give it one? If not, I'll give it zero. I guess one. No, oh man, that's every problem that we have that I'm really scared of just amplified to the extreme of super intelligence. You know how bad it would be if some of the bad people in history, the dictator types, had this kind of technology. No, terrible idea. Conquerors, AI takes control, decides that humans are a threat, nuance, waste of resources, and gets rid of us by a method that we don't even understand. And I'm not a big fan of being removed as a nuisance. Yeah, who would, put five stars on this one. Like, oh, I'm ready to just be eliminated because I'm like basically a parasite on the earth. Descendants. AI replaces humans, but it gives us a graceful exit. Maybe. Making us view them as our worthy descendants. We feel like happy parents. We're proud to have a child who's smarter than us to move on without us. And then we know that they're gonna go on to accomplish things that we knew we never could because that is how parent, you know, parents think about kids. They like, go out there and do more than I did. I worked hard to give you an opportunity to Go populate the cosmos. When they give us a graceful exit, I guess that would probably just mean like dying from natural causes or living a really good life and then making a choice from when we want to end it or something. So and I'll give that one uh, at least three stars. Zookeeper, an omnipotent AI keeps some humans around who feel like zoo animals and lament their fate. Heck no. I actually still remember there's one part in the book where he says, we don't build zoos for the animals. We build them for our pleasure. If we're in the zoo, it's not for our pleasure. It's so the AI can study us or do whatever. Absolutely hate this one. 1984, the technology progress moves towards super intelligence is permanently curtailed, not by an AI, but a human led Orwellian surveillance state where certain kinds of AI research are banned. No, that's another terrible one. Google and Facebook and Alibaba and all the big companies just get together and just monitor us in super intense ways. Still all the human fallibility about decision making and power hungry control politicians, forget it. That one's another zero. Reversion. Technological progress toward super intelligence is prevented by reverting to a pre-technological society in the style of the Amish. No, man, I like technology. I don't want to be a Luddite, I don't wanna be anti-technology, I'm just worried about a super intelligence doing things that I can't even imagine. I just don't know, it's the uncertainty that kills me. Technology that I'm certain does things is actually super nice. I love tech in that sense. I'd rather go back in time than go into the world of ASI, although AGI is a world I'd be pretty happy with. So I guess I'd rather go into the past than the future, so I'll give it two stars. Self-destruction, super intelligence is never created because humanity drives itself extinct by other means. Say nuclear bombs, biotech mayhem, fueled by climate crisis, that kind of thing. No, I don't wanna self-destruct from nuclear weapons before we even get there zero this is the libertarian utopia i could live there look more beautiful women than i expected blue skies lots of greenery i'm down oh my god benevolent dictator i don't know is that a guy benevolent if the image is anything to go off i'm gonna take that one down a star egalitarian utopia looks pretty freaking nice that's probably the nicest one actually like that's definitely the future that i want from the image it's still one i kind of like out of the other options also but my favorite one was gatekeeper 
Mm, from the images, kind of looks like a police surveillance state or something. Yeah, Protector God. This one looks the most movie worthy, if anything. That definitely looks like a Marvel superhero slash villain, unsure. Crystal power Tesseract is controlled by that thing. The Enslaved God, kind of the same thing, but just with more darker tones. Well, the Descendants image looks really different. Yeah, a little happy family and stuff. Just like, okay, thanks for the peaceful exit. It was great being humanity for a while. Yeah, Zookeeper, that could be about right. Oh, that's kind of crazy. The reversion, the kind of Amish one. Still got robots there, but they kind of backwards in time. Ooh, the Orwellian state. Yeah, that's not a good one. Okay, the self-destruction before we even get to ASI. Another one I'm not a big fan of, and it looks that way from the images also. So my number one's the Gatekeeper, but I was pretty big fans of all three above it too. What future do I want? Well, what I'd like is certainty in some way. I'm really interested in artificial intelligence being less of a black box. I hate that it's so unknown in some of the decisions that it makes. So I'm a fan of the explainability movement. Try to figure out why some of these decisions are made, put good logical rules to follow so we can kind of have some kind of understanding of why things happen, not just always have the best answer. And I understand neural networks fundamentally don't work that way, but there is some explainability we can have. So I want a future where there's more explainability, in fact, as much explainability as possible for why ASI makes the decisions that it does. So now let's hop over and see the results from 1500, mostly experts or enthusiasts in the field. How soon is artificial intelligence going to be here? 2100, no way, man. Like we're talking five years. I think, I saw, I thought four years, but I could understand like 10, 15, probably not even 20. That's like, what are you thinking, man? Okay, if superhuman intelligence appears, will it be a good or a bad thing? It looks like the majority think probably good. I'm kind of in the minority. I mean, in the long run, I do think for a while it's gonna be awesome. So maybe it's hard to really say how long the time scale people were thinking on is. Do you want there to be super intelligent AI? I said no. Look at how small my little part of that pie chart is. God, everybody's just so excited. Yeah, that's why we're like dodos running off the cliff, but obviously I'm going with everyone. All right, what should the future look like? In this book, Tegmark argues that we shouldn't passively ask what will happen. That is true. This is not like aliens just showed up on Earth and we're gonna see what they give us. Even though I talk about this super AI being like the difference between a dog and a human, like a million fold, it is something that we're going to build and we can kind of guide in the early ways. Like where you plant a seed changes how the plant grows up. We know things about the environment it's gonna be in. If super intelligence arrives, who should be in control? Machines? humans both together so people a lot of people like humans but a lot of people like both together which which is a good answer I can really see all these points of view I even understand human I just don't think in theory we could and reasonably speaking I just feel like that's out of the question because we just can't if one day you get an AI helper do you want it to be conscious I said definitely no wow most people really want it to be conscious huh they really want their phone or their drone or their robot to just truly have that same world model consciousness they have, huh? Make it so it can enjoy those experiences. I mean, it's like bringing a baby into the world. It'd be a beautiful thing if you think about it in the right way. Depends on the circumstances might be a good answer. I think we'll learn more as that comes. What should a future civilization strive for? Maximizing positive experiences was really popular. Hmm. Yeah, minimizing suffering. That's, I'm glad people kind of like that one. That's, that's how I feel about it too. Do you want to see life spread into the cosmos? Wow, yeah, emphatically, yes. Yeah, everybody wants to see spread into the cosmos. Spread your wings and fly, humanity. All right, now are you guys ready for the ideal society? We've seen through images, I've talked through them all. Let's see what experts think the ideal society looks like. Oh, look at my gatekeeper choices way down there. Totally, not, not totally contrarian, but only like the 1984 and zookeeper ones are worse. Huh, I wonder what I got so different from, I would have, I mean, I guess I didn't think it was gonna be the most popular, but I kinda thought more people would want the gatekeeper, okay? Everybody loves the egalitarian utopia and the libertarian utopia. They have the word utopia in them, how could you not like them? Protector God, yeah, I mean, that one made sense. Descendants, happy exit, go on without me. The benevolent dictator, we're like, eh, knows what we want. And then, yeah, there's gatekeeper down there. Few people dislike all the scenarios. And then, yeah, I mean, this makes sense. These are terrible ones. Just to refresh your memory, the one that people like the most is the egalitarian utopia. Humans, cyborgs, and uploads coexist peacefully, and we get rid of property rights, and we give guaranteed income. Obviously, there's something really appealing and sort of humbling about that, that let's just share it all together. All right, so hopefully you learned a lot, thought through some scenarios. If you guys wanna help this channel grow, please hit that subscribe button. And my next goal for the channel is to get to 6,000 subscribers.